Good evening. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. Always a pleasure to worship with all of you. Our theme for today is live free from the fear of judgment. We know that in the end we will be held accountable before God, but we understand that we do not have to fear that day because our Lord is merciful and Jesus has paid for our sins. So the, the, the verdict is, is not guilty for us. So we ask God to bless our, our worship today and we begin with our opening hymn. Please stand. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, for it is evening, and the day is almost done. Let your light scatter the darkness. Let it shine in our hearts and lives. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
We have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we have been bought back from sin, death, and hell by the perfect life and innocent death of Jesus Christ. In him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated join us singing the psalm. Thank you. First reading for today is Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. The prophet Daniel foretells that the world will get worse and then judgment day will come. All whose names are written by Christ in the book of life need not fear the judgment. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. 
But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 to 28. This will serve as our sermon text for today. We can live free of the fear of God's judgment because of the sacrifice our high priest made. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, not to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest entered the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world, but he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. We join in saying that together. Alleluia. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Alleluia. The gospel reading for today is John chapter 5, verses 25 to 29. God the Father has given Jesus the authority to judge. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have not done what is good will rise to live, and those who have, ha, who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who in love and mercy died for you, so that you can have comfort and reassurance in the midst of your death or in the final judgment to come. Amen. I can't say it's a a pleasant feeling to have. I, I can't say it's something that I enjoy. The feeling is that that feeling of guilt. <laughs> you know, you have that feeling of guilt and it, it, you carry it around wherever you go. Maybe you've had that feeling. Maybe you've experienced it before as a, a child or as an adult. And, and, you know, maybe it could be a variety of reasons why it happened, right? Maybe it happened because, you know, you, you did something that you shouldn't have, like mom and dad told you not to do it. Or maybe you found yourself in some kind of thing that you didn't know was good at the time before you did it. You know, you think of maybe a little boy in the living room and you think, okay, mom has told him not to play around her precious vase. But he he seems to do it more and more, and he still keeps on doing it. But this time, as he's playing around the the, the precious vase, he knocks it over, and it breaks. What is he thinking? Mom's going to be mad, and mom's going to punish me for this. And and so you also kind of think in a certain way, you know, it's not just kids that feel this way. It's also adults as well, right? 
an adult, maybe in a certain sense, you're driving in your car and you see in your rear view mirror those red and blue lights. And what are you thinking? How bad is the punishment going to be, right? And so when we carry this guilt around, it just weighs on, on our hearts and our minds and it feels so heavy. But today we, we don't hear about a, a mom or a police officer, but we hear about God. And on that last day, we will have to stand before God and be judged. And so will that day be a day of fear, or, or will that day, be, will it be free from judgment? And so we, we think today, as we jump into our reading, and you, you jump into Hebrews, you might wonder, who is this letter written to? Well, this letter was written to some Christians who were, had Jewish backgrounds, so essentially kind of this Jewish-Christian hybrid. And so they, they understood their Old Testament very well, right? But what was the situation that they were in? The situation that they were in was that they were being persecuted for being followers of Jesus, and you could imagine that is not an easy way to live. It is challenging. It is a, a cross. And so you, you picture these maybe Christians kind of thinking to themselves, you know, is this worth it? Is this worth all the, the hassle and suffering that we're enduring? Maybe we just go back to Judaism and, you know, we won't endure this hardship from maybe the government or our, our neighbors, right? Right? And so they're focused on right now, or maybe they're also focused on the life to come. Is it worth holding on to Christianity? Is it worth holding on to Jesus? You know, what does that mean for my eternal life? And I think that's a, a very important kind of thing to really think about here. You know, you, you think about a, a person that, you know, is enduring hardship, right? It's easy to think about what is to come. So you get diagnosed with cancer. You're thinking about the life to come. You go through a death of a loved one. You're thinking about the life to come. You're watching on the news these wars and rumors of wars. You're thinking about the life to come. You see all the natural disasters and the floodings in Spain and around the world and all the volcanoes that seem to be erupting, you're thinking about the life to come, right? And if you're thinking about the life to come, you're also thinking, how do I get there, right? How do I enter heaven? If heaven exists, how do I get to that place? And there's a lot of different thoughts on that. You know, the, there's a lot of different and false religions out there that claim, you know, this is the way to get to heaven. There are a lot of, of people that say you must do these many penance to enter the gates of heaven. You must do these many pilgrimages to enter the kingdom of heaven. Or, you know, you, you have to live a, a good enough life, right? That's how you get into heaven. And so, you know, you really think, okay, there, there's this kind of aspect to it all. It's, it's about how I look before God. How do I stand before the God Almighty, the one who is perfect? We understand because of our conscience that we will be judged on that last day. And so we hear from our text for today, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Sometimes I, I don't think we, we understand, you know, the, the seriousness of, of God's judgment. I, I think it's not like mom and dad are, are, are coming home. You know, it's not like, you know, the police officer who, who pulls you over. No. It is the God of the universe who has created all things, who has made all things, who, who has all the power to throw the book at us. This is the God that all people will have to stand before. 
and we understand what God's requirement is. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. You know, again, this is the God, and this is his standard. He demands complete and utter perfection. He demands that that we not sin, not even once, in thought, word, or deed. And if we sin, we we deserve our eternal judgment. We deserve the sentence of, of guilty. So maybe we can kind of go through this a bit. I, I, I don't know your life. <laughs> I don't know the things you've thought. I don't know the things you've done. But you know many of them. I know what is for me. And God knows the sins that you have committed that you know and the sins that you don't know. And, and if you had to sit before the judge and plead your case, what would that sound like? But it sounds something like this. Well, Lord, I lost my temper because they pushed my buttons. Lord, you know that that extra beer that I probably shouldn't have had, it just tasted so good. Lord, you know those thoughts that were in my head? I had no control over them. Lord, you know that time I was with my friends and I denied you? I didn't want to lose them as friends. I'm sorry. You know, there's a lot of things that we have in our mind and all these kind of excuses that we make. You know, that, that you know, I, I am not as bad as I appear. Or, or, Lord, you know that neighbor that was living next to me here on earth? You know, he didn't even go to church at all. At least I went once in a while, right? But the thing is, God, again, demands Perfection. He demands a holy heart. And we hear in Matthew about the judgment that is to come for for all people. But he says to those on his left, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. And then what do the people respond with, these unbelievers? They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Well, we might wonder, you know, after hearing that, how could anyone stand before God? You know, all the, the, right, all the, the good things that I do are but filthy rags. All the, the good things that I, I think I, I'm doing are, are tainted in sin. And I deserve along with the rest of the world, to be told, you are guilty, away from me. And this could leave a a person up at night. This could cause a person to be terrified of God. And rightfully so, because that is what we deserve. We deserve, again, the book to be thrown at us and to be thrown into the fires of hell. But how can this statement, live free from the fear of judgment, be true? Well, we hear in our Hebrew text, For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, not to appear for us, now to appear for us in God's presence. You know, (laughs) when I preach on the book of Hebrews, it's always kind of challenging. You, you, you read through it and you're like, okay, this makes sense. And then you read through it again and you're like, what is this saying? <laughs> it, it can be quite challenging. And I think as you go through this, it might be kind of helpful to understand, you know, this, this sanctuary that God is talking about. The, the sanctuary is not built by human hands. 
Maybe you think about the tabernacle or the temple, right? It was literally made by human hands. And so you think about the temple that is in heaven. That was not made by human hands. That was made by the hands of God. And Jesus now lives and reigns in that temple, in that place, on our behalf. And this is a good thing. That God, in a certain sense, who is our Savior Jesus, is there on our behalf amongst the, or before God the Father. We hear this. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he is always lives to intercede for them. You know, Jesus, the risen Lord, is in heaven pleading your case. He, he, he is speaking on your behalf. Again, picture the judge that is God the Father sitting there. Would you like to represent yourself before God? Or would you rather have Jesus represent you? Every single time, I would rather have Jesus represent me. And I bet the same is true for you too, right? But what gives Jesus this right to represent us? Well, we know that he is God. We, we know that he's Lord. But what did he do to make this possible? Nor did he enter, we hear, heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place. Every year with blood that is not his own. Again, you, you must understand a few things here. You know, Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice. But he's having us, the writer here to the Hebrews, is having us focus on this sacrifice. He's having us focus on these Old Testament sacrifices that were done in the Old Testament and that these Jewish people, these Jewish Christians knew well, right? And so we might go to Leviticus to hear this account. Here we hear, He shall then slaughter the goat, that is the high priest, for the sin offering for the people, and take its blood behind the curtain and do with it as he did with the bull's blood. He shall sprinkle on the atonement cover and in front of it. In this way, he will make atonement for the most holy place because of the uncleanness and rebellion of the Israelites. Whatever their sins have been, he is to do the same for the tent of meeting, which is among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So here was the practice of slaughtering these animals. And some days, like the Day of Atonement, there were special days where they would do kind of a, a special sacrifice. But they would slaughter these animals' blood and pour it on the appropriate places that God had commanded them. And they would do this over and over and over again. I, I think I can't even fathom how much blood was poured out for the sins of those people year after year after year. I mean, if you just read through Leviticus, you see all these animal sacrifices, and it wasn't just like one animal sometimes. It could be multiple animals and all these different things that they had to do. But that was only a sign of the sacrifice to come. Those were pointing to the lamb that would be slaughtered on the cross for all sins for all times. Those high priests had to go into the temple over and over again. But our, he our, our brother and Lord Jesus had to only go into the temple once. He only had to sacrifice himself once for the sins of all people. We hear, otherwise... Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world, but he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. So the sacrifice that Jesus gave on that cross was sufficient. When he says it was finished, it was done. There was no more sacrifice that needed to be made. And so we, we think, go back again to that courthouse. We hear the, the, the Heavenly Father 
you know, stating how, how guilty we are. He's just going down the list saying, you've sinned this way, you've sinned this way, you've sinned this way. And we just sit there. Well, we know that we can't say anything against it because it's all true. He's not bringing false accusations against us. He's just speaking the truth of how guilty we are. And again, we're just getting ready for him to hit the gavel and say, again, guilty. But then Jesus stands up and he pleads the case on your behalf. And he says, Dear Heavenly Father, I am the one who has suffered for these sins. I have received the judgment that this person is supposed to deserve. I have paid for it upon the cross so this person could be innocent, that this person could be proven not guilty, so that this person could enter the kingdom of heaven that you have prepared, so that this person could enter into the temple that is the heavenly home of God. And the Father, with a smile, hears the, 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 the case, and he says, You are my son, and I have loved you. You have paid for the sins of this whole world, and by my grace and mercy, this person has believed by the Spirit. And so, because they believe in you, because they trust in your, your life and death, because they trust in you as their Savior, as they, because they trust in me as their God, as the, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I announce to you, not guilty. And so the weight of that guilt, that stomach feeling that is turning, calms down. There's a sigh of relief, a sigh of comfort, knowing that we are forgiven. Knowing that on that last day, when we stand before God, that we will not have to fear that final judgment. And I, I think as we understand this, as we understand those verses at the beginning of our text, the last section we might appreciate a little bit more. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. We know that Jesus will come. We know the King of kings and that judge will return to judge the world, both the believer and the unbeliever. But for the believer, there is no fear. For the believer, we do not tremble in fear of a guilty verdict. Because when we hold on to Jesus, when we hold on to the cross, when we hold on to the gift of salvation, there, there is nothing to fear. But we have hope. We, we have a desire to be in heaven. We desire for the judgment to come. We, we, we pray, Lord Jesus, come. And so as we wait, as we long, you know, we, we have a heart that is at rest. You have a heart that can be at peace. There's no more turning in, in bed uh, of fear of the sin that you've committed. When you've turned it to the Lord, when you've asked for forgiveness, He lovingly and graciously forgives you. He is slow to anger and abounding in love. What a comfort. But again, woe to the person that does not believe in the Savior. Again, that will be a day of fear. That will be a day of trembling. He will say to them, be gone from me. And he will turn his face. And so there is an urgency, there is a desire to proclaim that word of salvation to others so that they can have the, the, the same feeling we do. Peace, comfort, reassurance. So as you live your life, you experience those hard times, you receive those diagnoses that are, that are not pleasant, you see the things that are happening in the world. Yes, the Lord is drawing nigh. Yes, the Lord it will come. 
And so we keep our eyes fixed on the heavens. We keep our eyes and hearts fixed on Jesus. And we long to hear the voice of our God. And be reassured, you're not guilty because of Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are merciful. You sent your one and only Son who has sacrificed who was sacrificed for our sins, so we would not have to fear death or the final judgment. Oh Lord, please do not forget what Jesus has done. Please do not hold our sins against us. Do not turn your face away from us, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, steer us from sin, and when we do sin, turn our hearts to repentance and help us to hold on to that forgiveness forever. We long to enter your heavenly home, dear Lord, that you have prepared for us, and will allow us to enter by your grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join confessing our, our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God of grace and truth, we plead for our forgiveness. We ask that you look to Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for us. Lord, do not hold our sins against us. Do not turn your face away from us, but instead... Shower your love and mercy upon us. Use us as your servants to go into the world to proclaim this truth to our friends and family and our neighbors. Please help us to find comfort that, yes, you have forgiven all our sins, and so that in the end we do not have to fear you as judge, but we can find comfort as you as our Heavenly Father who loves us deeply. Amen. We join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. You may be seated. We conclude with the closing hymn.
Good evening. Nice to worship with all of you. Just a quick announcement. On December 1st, we'll have a special service by this uh, organist, Charles Bono. Uh, just trying again something different, so if you're interested in that. Again, Wednesday will be our Thanksgiving service. We will not have service on Thursday. Um, and our Wednesday service will be at 6.30. And that will be kind of like... Uh, I don't know if you can remember our Christmas services. We've done kind of a song and devotion service. Um, this year we're going to do the same thing for Thanksgiving. So I, I, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Usually I've, I've preached on kind of the articles, you know, um, look at kind of ta- being thankful different for different parts of our body, our eyes and ears. So it, this one will be a little different than what we've done in past years. So again, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, we got these uh, Advent devotions. Maybe you saw it on your walking in. You may take one. They're the free for taking. Uh, it's, they're done by the professors and teachers of Martin Luther College. And uh, I ordered, I think, 50 of them. So uh, if you're interested, feel free to take them. They're a nice kind of resource.